describe just going back like the first time that you got in a cockpit and you knew you were gonna be flying a plane? Can you describe that experience? Like have the, the process of like learning how to fly? Mm-hmm. I had an instructor, her name was Lulu Rothenberger. And uh, I got in the airplane, it was the Cub. 65 horsepower engine, in it, that's all. I sat in the back, she sat in the front. And we took off and we were up at uh, Palwaukee. That's just north of Chicago in Lake Forest. I was going to college there. And so uh, Lulu Rothenberger took me out and we started flying. And uh, just a light cub, a lot of fun. And I told you about the fact that all the side ripped off of the fabric. I think I mentioned that to you before. When she, wanted, she, wanted, she asked me, did you want to do a loop? I said, sure. And on the way down, the wind got in that old fabric and tore it off from where I was sitting. Went back toward the tail. <laughs> we come in and everybody's laughing. <laughs> but anyway, that's how I started to fly. And I left there. I went to University of Iowa. Physical ed training was excellent. And from there, there was no flying during the University of Iowa. From there, we went to uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota and started flying uh, uh, by wings. That's two wings, okay? It's called Stearmans. And they were Navy Stearmans. We flew those. And when you got through, if you didn't know how to fly, you sure, you surely knew how to fly when you got through with those. They did everything, loops, rolls, snap rolls, just everything you can think of, we did. And uh, they'd have big circles on strips out there. You got to put it in a circle. You pull it up, crank it up like this, and drop it down and roll it out. They don't do things like that anymore. We always did spins. You know, you pull it up the airplane, push on this rudder. You're going to put it off this way and stall out. But you let it there, it'll keep going down toward the earth. Now the only way, since you did, the only way you're going to do that is corrected by pushing the rudder so it comes back the other direction, and that'll stop the spin and you release it. That's it. You know, a big deal about that. But they used to make a lot of deals out of it. Really, ain't nothing to it. But at least I thought so. <laughs> so how does all that compare to the first time you got in the cockpit? Okay, I'll tell you. I had been in the cockpit of the Grumman, sitting in it on the ramp for a few days. And I was trying to remember with my eyes closed, landing gear lever over here, tail wheel lock back here, seat up, uh, the uh, oxygen mask is what I'll talk. It would fit in with a, micro, a mic in here. So you got oxygen and everything. And, but I usually had left it off until I got up to, well, by the time I got to 15,000 feet, I had it on. But anyway, how did I feel? I was overwhelmed, really. I got out of a, what they call an SNJ. That's a tandem seat, a person here, and the person back here was a student. This big airplane, I looked at it, it weighed seven ton. And I looked at that thing and I said, I had to fly it. But there's no cockpit for somebody in there to teach you how to fly it. So I sat in it and I memorized everything. And I sat in it for, you know, so I felt comfortable, you know. So then there was a day, okay, you're up, Woody. I start the engine, I taxi out, easy, <laughs> real slow, and looking this way and looking that way. The reason I had to do this is I had to look over this way because I couldn't see around the engine was so big if I wanted to see forward. So I did turn a little bit, and that's the airplane I'm talking about. And as I turned this way, I could see you. Now I turn this way, I could see her, but I couldn't see, you know, I couldn't see straight forward. I taxied out and they had people out there in radio contact with us. Now, if this is the runway and I pull up and I'm stopped right here, I would roll forward maybe 10 feet 
and I push a lever right here. That lever would lock. And remember, here's the engine, here's the wings, and here's the tail. It would lock the tail wheel so it was straight. And we're sitting now, two wheels up here, the front, uh, landing gear wheel, and back here the tail wheel. Now you couldn't move it this way, this way. So <clears throat> you just added the throttle and you knew you had a hold of a lot, really and truly, first time. And you, I was on the rudders, and it, it, the torque wants to take you off this way alone. So I had a lot of right rudder on it. And just the torque of the engine is so powerful. It would take you to the left. You'd correct that by pushing the right rudder on and having the wind hit the tail to hold you this way. So we took off, and once you got airborne, hit that wheel, so then you were really flying. But it was a lot easier than you think. Really, it was. It was uh, okay on the takeoff. I came back down. They talked me in. I'm flying around. I'm going to land down here. They got it on the ground. They said, your sink rate, you know, too low. Do I add a little throttle? And we did that. We came back in. The first landing I made was nice as can be. And they were very good, easy to land. Even though they were big fighters, they were, I thought they were easy to land anyway. <clears throat> 